Back when I worked at Weeder Publications in the early 2000s, Chris Aceto used to write all these articles on carb cycle. I'm like, well, that's interesting. I've tried it. I've done it. It's evolved, and it means more than just what Chris Aceto does. Let's talk about carb cycling and how it might be able to work for you. Boom! Boom! What's up, everyone? Mark Lobiner, TigerFitness.com. What is carb cycling? Well, it's a popular dietary strategy that's gained traction in recent years as a way to lose fat and improve your body composition. So the basic principle behind carb cycling is to alternate cycling between days of high carbohydrate and low carbohydrate, okay? The idea is that by manipulating carbohydrate intake this way, the body will be forced to tap into stored fat for energy on the low carb days, while the high carb days will replenish glycogen stores and provide energy for intense exercise. It's basically all the beautiful nutrients and all that stuff in your muscle, right? Muscular hydration. So before we go into that, let's understand the roles that carbohydrates play in the body. So carbs are one of three macronutrients. You got carbs, protein, and fat provides energy for the body. When consumed, the body breaks carbohydrate, any carbohydrate, into glucose. When you take in glucose, your body's like, hey, glucose, it's there, I don't bring it down which is then used by the body for energy. Any glucose that is not used is stored in the liver and muscles as glycogen. So again, when your muscles don't need any more, your liver's like, I'll take that. Then your muscle stores that in case your body needs it if you're devoid of carbohydrate in your diet. So as you know, fat loss is all about creating this caloric deficit. That means consuming four fewer calories than you burn. One way to achieve this is by reducing carbohydrate intake because you have essential amino acids, which is protein, essential fats. There's no essential carbohydrate. So what I like to do is set protein at 1 to 1.5 grams of protein per pound of body weight, fat at 0.3 to 0.5 grams of fat per pound of body weight, and that way you can adjust the carbohydrates up or down whether you want to lose fat or gain body mass or gain weight, okay? So by reducing carb intake your body is forced to tap into your fat stores because you're consuming less calories. So that's where carb cycling comes into play. By alternating low carb with high carb days, the body's constantly being forced to adapt to different levels of carbohydrate intake. On the low carb days, the body will be burning stored fat for energy. While on the high carb days, the body will be replenishing glycogen stores and providing energy for intense exercise. So the way acetone and a lot of people do it is there's low carb, mid carb and high carb days. Okay. So you have, let's say 20 grams of carb one day, protein and fat will be about the same. Then you'll have 40 grams of carbs the next day, and then maybe 300 the next day, whatever. It depends on the coach, on the person, on the dieter. So once you calculate your maintenance, which is basically what your body needs to maintain body weight, you can take that and adjust the carbs up and down. So one day you'll be hypocaloric, one day you're hypercaloric, one day hypo, one day hyper, one day hypo, one day hyper. And at the end of the week, it'll even out and you're in a caloric deficit overall. So it's basically a surplus deficit. And the goal is over the course of that week to achieve more of a deficit. So how many carbs take in on low and high carb days? It depends on the person. Like for me, a low carb day would be 200 grams. When I was getting ready for the USA's, man, I never went below 200 grams. My normal day was 360 grams of carbs. For most people, that would not work. So let's go into how we modify this, right? So carb cycling does not have to be done that way. You ever hear of a cheat meal? What happens on a cheat meal? Eat more carbs. You ever hear of uh, refeeds throughout the week? When, let's say, Wednesday and Saturday, you have an extra 200 grams of carbs with your last two meals of the day. That is carb cycling. Sure, it's not as sexy, not as planned, but here's what I do for my clients a lot of the time, not all the time. What I'll do is I will have higher carbs on training days. So let's say that you train Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. On those two days, you will have I like either having an outright bar or some whey and a banana, okay? That adds about 500 calories, about 60 grams of carbs throughout the day in your pre and post-workout area. So you're going to have an extra 500 calories. So if you're normally 
almost 600 calories actually for the outright bar, right? So you're normally taking in, let's say 1500 calories. On that day, you're taking in 2100 calories, a lot of it being carbs. So I am a big fan of that kind of thing. Now the thing carb cycling doesn't prevent is needing a diet break. Carb cycling is not gonna be enough for your body to replenish the hormones that are affected by dieting, ghrelin, leptin, um, thyroid, all those things. To get those reset, you have to do something called a diet break. And I have videos on that. I'll do one on that in the next couple of days. A diet break is essentially five to seven days with your calories at around at, at or around maintenance. So you want to go, let's say your maintenance is 2,000, put it at about 2,000 to 2,200, right? So the bottom line is, I love this. I love carb cycling, but there's so many ways to do it. For example, Dave Palumbo, he does a ketogenic diet, but you're allowed a cheat meal on the weekends. What happens in that cheat meal? You're eating more carbohydrate. Hopefully that explains carb cycling, and I do think is effective. I do think even if it does not help physiologically with fat loss, helps psychologically. Because when you're dieting and you know that in a day, you get to have 200 grams of carbs from, let's say, oats. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine 200 grams of carbs from oats? It's a lot of friggin' oats. Satiating. You feel full for once. Man, so I'm a fan. Anyway, guys, if you're looking to burn extra fat, there's something called Yohimbine HCL. Yohimbine, when you're in a caloric deficit, helps release fat from those hard-to-reach places, I like to call them. Hips, thighs, and buttocks in women abdominal, lower back, love handles in men, but you have to be in a caloric deficit. You have to be in a deficit, but Yohimbine is awesome. It's extremely inexpensive. If it wasn't already inexpensive enough, I'm gonna give you 20% off. Go to tigerfitness.com, use code Yohimbine video. That's Yohimbine video, 20% off tigerfitness.com. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to this channel, click on that notification bell, do all your supplement shopping, including including Insurgent, Planta, at TigerFitness.com. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm Mark Lobliner. That's not a game. The best booster isn't a shot. It's your natural immune system. Every time we step out into the world, we are attacked by viruses that do their best to break down our defenses. Vita helps solve this problem. Vita contains proven antiviral replication supplements and Immulina to ensure that your body is primed to defend itself against foreign invaders. Don't go another day unprotected. Get your Vita today.